about sensing in service of society. And we do this using a, a large array of sensing capabilities from the global scale with satellites and other remote sensing activities such as weather radars to then sensing across communities with 24 seven uh, sentinels placed all across DFW actually right now. And then we also have autonomous robotic teams which involve aerial robots, robotic boats, walking robots that can go into an environment that they've not seen before and rapidly survey it. So activities like I was engaged with at NASA that would typically take 10 years or more we can actually do in a really short time, a matter of 15 minutes with the onboard machine learning and the multiple sensors on various platforms working together. Then we also actually use wearable sensors to look at the impact of the environment on us as humans. So in the IQ, our focus areas will be two basic ones in service of society. One is for drought, and the second is related to air quality. So for drought, we've been having a population growth in Texas of at least a thousand people a day since 1990. And so we've also had no new reservoirs for 35 years, except for the one that's just coming online right now. And that capacity of the new reservoir corresponds to about uh, less than one year of our population's growth. So we've seen over the last um, many years, in fact, that periodically we get droughts in North Texas. And each of these droughts correspond to a La Nina pattern. And as the population grows and the global average temperatures are increasing, it's not unreasonable to expect that we're going to get some more droughts as much as we wouldn't like that. So it really can make a massive difference if we are prepared for this to the best of our ability. So we found that in some cases from space, we can even see leaks uh, across the campus, for example. And so we are using our remote sensing capabilities from publicly available uh, satellite data together with our aerial vehicles and their hyperspectral sensing to do something with machine learning called super resolution which lets us have hyper fine uh, resolution data. It's the type of thing that on a CSI movie, uh, there's a tag you can't quite see or a face and they go, let's enhance that. Um, so essentially we're doing that with satellite data. Now um, on the air quality side, there's a large number of people uh, in the millions actually that die each year due to poor air quality. And it's not just the deaths that are concerning, but also things like the impact on our cognitive performance. There's been numerous studies. If you see them in the popular press, they will say something like poor air quality makes us dumb. And if you see them in the academic literature, it'll say something like airborne particulates impact cognitive performance. But essentially, they're saying the same thing. And it turns out that this also may be related to things like Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's seems to be largely associated with inflammation of the brain. And that inflammation can be associated with airborne particulates getting actually across from the air into the bloodstream and then across the blood brain barrier. So the amount of pollution, it doesn't just affect the environment in terms of it doesn't look so nice with the grayer skies and so on, but it actually can be impacting our everyday cognitive performance. And we all like to feel sharp and be able to perform at our best. So each of these applications involve uh, smart sensing at scale where we coordinate the large scale from satellites, the hyperlocal scale, from in situ and wearable sensors, and then sensors going across the community, say in an electric survey car and so on. So our role to be in the IQ, we passionately want to be in service of society. And the benefit for us of being in the IQ is we can meet more partners that share the same passion, collaborate. And our goal is not just to see what's wrong, but to help make things better together. So, that's basically what we're all about.